The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, everyone. Andy Brownell, along with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. A news Talk 1340, Carol C. AM and 96.9 FM. Boy, are we swinging back and forth for weather, Robin. Oh, my gosh. Let's just let it be summer, please. Please. Well, the well, d- the Dairy Queen on North Broadway opened up yesterday yeah. or Thursday, one of them. And uh, so that that's a sure sign of spring, right? Right. <laughs> it is. There's usually lines a mile long no matter what the weather is. Another Another sure sign is we all... In the past couple of weeks, got the big uh, property tax notice in the mail. Oh my gosh! From the, from the county, telling us exactly what we will be paying this year, and I imagine I'm not alone in seeing a big increase because I enjoyed a big increase in the value of my home. Bingo! You know, we talk and talk about how our house is our bank account that we live in, how it's the best investment because not only is it sitting in an account somewhere making you money, you're you're using it, right? It's your shelter. So, you know, it's your it's your biggest asset in most cases. And I cannot stress the importance of keeping it tip top shape, keeping it as nice as you can, updating it when it needs to be updated, making those repairs because it's increasing in value. And people are always happy about that, but yet they're never happy when their taxes go up. (laughs) It's inevitable, right? It's It's so funny the way our our brains work. You know, sometimes people will say, you know, Robin, I'm not settling for less. I want full price. I'm not taking a penny less. Okay, that's fine. You know, I think we priced it right. We'll hold out for full price. We get the house sold. We go out looking for houses. Let's offer them 10,000 less than they're asking. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. We can't, it funny. doesn't. It has to go both ways, right? So anyway, I I always get a kick out of it, and I'm never afraid to say, "Are we being fair?" Because we had this nice conversation about if we've got your house priced right, we are in a market where we can expect full, you know, uh, to get a full price offer, and we did. And now, the same goes for these sellers if their house sure. is priced right, and I believe it is. And here's the data to back that up. I think they deserve... Well, can we just try? <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> it's always fun. But anyway, so we talked a little bit um, before we got started here this morning because I found this fun article about where homeowners pay the lowest and highest property taxes. And so, um, as you and I were saying, Andy, well, some states have higher property taxes, but then they have low no income tax or, or lower sales tax. or lower sales tax or something like that but how we're so blessed here in minnesota to have the highest in all categories the trifecta <laughs> but guess what here we are loving every minute of living here complaining about the weather because it's what we minnesotans do it won't be long and everybody will be belly aching about it's too hot outside it's just funny but you know, if you think about the weather too the flip side of the weather is it apparently is responsible for longevity too. We have the among the longest lifespans in the whole world in the oh, country. Oh, now that's something I did not know. Hardy Minnesotans. Okay, well, good to know. Good to know. And you know, I think that um, I mean, no kidding. It used to be a big deal to see somebody like when Al Roker, or whoever would do the no, the other guy, the guy that passed away, would do the jars with the hundred-year-old birthday. Oh, and yeah. now I, I'm seeing local people, like a lady in the Plainview nursing home was 104. I mean, geez, Louise, gives me hope that maybe someday I will actually live to see grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Are they Never listening? Know. Are those kids I listening? Hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> Hint, if, hint. if they are not, somebody else is, and I'm sure they're going to hear about it, and I'm going to get the mom. Yeah, cut it uh, out. Too much pressure. <laughs> I don't. I, I just zip it. Luckily for me, we raised all those kids through the RBC house, so we've got lots and lots of beautiful grandbabies. So okay. it's all good. So all right, speaking so let's of Texas, take a look at this. Highest. Yes, so who's, who's highest? Take a guess. New York. 
you, you lucky guesser. So here we are. Um, highest is, I mean, everything in New York is expensive, but yet people stay there. Okay, so it says Tampa, Florida rose by 18% from 2019 to 2021, which is the highest percentage point jump in the country according to a report from LendingTree. But it's actually New Yorkers who pay the most in the country, a median of $9,091 a year, uh, followed by San Jose, California, 8858 and San Francisco, 8335 uh, But if you want to go somewhere and live where you don't have to pay much for property taxes, the median in Birmingham, Alabama was $995, followed by New Orleans at 1506 and Memphis, Tennessee at 1672 That's why everybody's moving down to Memphis. Maybe. Pay less taxes. It is interesting that San Jose and Tampa are comparable yeah. in property taxes. I, I would have thought that Silicon well, Valley would so, be way higher. Well, I think so many New Yorkers, especially with COVID, went to Florida. You know, they wanted to stay uh, on the East Coast. They wanted to get out of the city. So there was a huge migration. Plus, Florida so, has no income tax. Right. No income tax. And that's why a lot of people I know have their main yep. residence in Florida now. Because that income tax is a killer. Ooh, speaking of that, I'm still kind of, you know, feeling it because it was just last week, right? <laughs> Ugh, don't even uh, talk about it. You know, it's so funny. Uh, this is one of those, uh, I guess, generational type things. When you're younger, you you rushed into filing for your taxes because you always got. You're a getting a refund. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, now it's like, oh damn, I have to do my taxes today. It's the last day. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to write that check until the last day. Exactly. Well, and for us, you know, being self-employed, you pay quarterly, but you just oh hope when it comes to the end that you've paid enough, right? Because it's always like, ugh. And I've always been. I talk about you know, complain, complain. And I try to be really positive. You know I do. But I've always been like, oh, geez, we had to pay X number in taxes. And my son, little Mr. Smarty Pants, used to say to me, Mom, you shouldn't complain. That means you're making money. I said, you're right. You're right. So this year, his first year in real estate, <laughs> oh, my God, Mom, I had to pay. And I said, honey, you shouldn't complain. That means you're making money. He got a big grin on his face because he remembers. Paybacks are great. Paybacks, yes. <laughs> So anyway, let's see. What else does it tell me here? It's uh, I actually have a list of the states. So just in case anybody wants to move based on where the property taxes are the lowest, the very lowest is Hawaii, 0.3%. Oh, for the Alabama, rate. Alabama, okay. yeah. Uh, Alabama, 0.37%. Yeah, the houses are more expensive, and therefore they pay a more higher median. But, sure. Uh, Arizona, 0.39%. Colorado, 04 Tennessee, 042 uh, New Jersey, 1.79. Illinois, 1.78. Connecticut, 1.57. Vermont, 1.43. And Nebraska, 1.36. I'm going to tell you that yeah, in Rochester, you know, obviously if we do statewide, it's going to be less. But in Rochester, our taxes, I'm going to guess they're based at about somewhere between 1.25 and 1.5. Okay. That's what we we're see. up there then. So we're up there. Yep. And plus we, we play... Are pretty hefty income taxes and a high property tax. I mean, a high well, sales tax. But we all stay because we love the snow and the blizzards. We just well, love maybe it. It's because, maybe it's because we want to avoid the hurricanes. And But you know what? Here we are looking at floods. Down in Wabasha, it's... Oh, have you been down there? I've been watching the river levels. Uh, wow. You know, yeah. It's not it going to be crazy. bad as 2001, but it's going to probably be pretty close. Yeah, it's really bad. I mean, you drive down Main Street where there's housing, you know, after the the business part of the street and everybody's got the big hoses going into the sewer, pumping water out of their basement and down on Lawrence Boulevard, the same and their backyards are underwater. Oh, I mean, it is a great place to live right on the water, but you know, with floods comes. Yeah. Headache. There's always a plus and a minus to everything. Yeah. Exactly. Including taxes. Including taxes because our values are going up. We're paying more taxes, but our values are going up and that is one of the five reasons why millennials are buying homes. Okay, let's hold on to that and talk okay. more about that when we come back from the break. Millennials right. are buying homes. More with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax results in a moment 
on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back, everyone. We're with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. And as Robin said before the break, why are millennials buying up houses? <laughs> it's one of those topics I just love because I remember it wasn't that many years ago all the quote-unquote experts were predicting that these millennials will never want to be homeowners. They're always going to want that urban lifestyle and living downtown in apartment buildings for all the excitement. It's a new generation. And I always said, yeah, until they start getting married and have babies, yeah. Exactly. And, and when they're sick of paying the crazy rents just so they can have a fancy coffee maker in the lobby, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. But, okay, so... There are currently 72 plus million millennials. That's a lot. Okay. And according to this study that was done by a company called Zonda, I don't ever heard of it, but 98% of the millennials want to become homeowners at some point if they're not already. That's a pretty high percentage for from going to none of the millennials are ever going to buy homes to now 98% have the desire. Okay. So why do you suppose they want to buy houses? Well, the same just, old fashioned reasons that we all did, right? Exactly. It's not reinventing the wheel. So they want a change in lifestyle. So they're reaching that time where they're sick of being in the apartment. Now they want to have a yard. They want to throw the frisbee to the dog. Eventually they want to put up a swing set, whatever it is, right? Um, they want that sense of stability and settling down. So maybe it means, okay, now I'm locked into a job that I think I'm going to stay at for a while. And so now it makes more sense to put roots down. Or, you know, I've established a really close circle of friends here. So no matter where I'm going to work remotely from, this is where I'm going to stay. Or closer to the grandparents or whatever the reason. Or they finally... They finally notice that when they go to the bars downtown that they're the oldest ones in the room. Exactly, exactly. So now they know this is kind of, this is home. This is where I'm going to stay. So, and what I just started to say before the break is the rising home values. They're, they're not stupid, these millennials. You know, they understand how much home prices have gone up and they're thinking, I want to get in on that. Yeah. So by purchasing that home, they they have that asset that will continue to increase in value over the years. And so they will start to gain that home equity and and earn that wealth. You would want to be outside the circle when you're at work and everybody's talking about the home that they just purchased last year or the year before. And And it's already already gone up by, (laughs) yeah, exactly. I already have this much equity in this house and I haven't done a thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I actually, um, oh my gosh, I sold a house yesterday and I'm not even kidding. Those owners have only lived there two years. I'm guessing they're making, oh gosh, for sure, for sure, 20%, maybe 15%. But I mean, it's worth it. They have the house so loaded. It is so beautiful and the buyer's thrilled. So, you know... He's been looking at everything else and seeing what you can't get for the amount. And yeah, it's, it's a sun real. Well, mean, another, definitely, if you along, do it right, those, those houses really do increase in value. Along those same lines, I know a young woman who wasn't married at the time, but had a good job working you know where, and mm-hmm. went and decided to build a house. And, <laughs> and me being the, getting to be a curmudgeon age was, well, that's really ambitious, you know, <laughs> because the price tag of the house was, oh, at the time, considerable. But, man, did she make a good choice. Wow. Yeah, isn't that something? And that, this was pre-pandemic that she built that house, and she's been in that house, I think, three years now, and that house has almost doubled in value. Isn't that something? That yes. Is so, that is so impressive. I actually, one of the most impressive sales that I ever was involved in was a Mayo Clinic physician that I used to work with, 
And when she had gotten out of, um, you know, gotten invited on staff, and her husband was also on staff, they invested in a big, beautiful, historic home in uh, Pill Hill, a big, big one. I mean, it's a kind of a well-known one, but just to, you know, not mention names, I won't get any more specific, but they bought the house, and she told me the story, they bought the house for $200,000. On Pill Hill? Well, wow. I'm talking, well, this was 50 years, oh, okay. or 40 <laughs> years ago or something okay. like that. I mean, it was a, it was a big investment. It was a big investment at the time. Her parents were like, oh my gosh, just because you're on staff doesn't mean you need to spend almost a quarter <laughs> of a million dollars on a house. You know, people are spending 60,000 or 80,000 or, or whatever, right? Well, let me just tell you what. They enjoyed that house for 30 years. They raised their family there. And then I sold it for a hefty little price tag of a million six. Whoa. So I think they did all right. Yeah, I bet they were very happy. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm I'm not saying that they did nothing to it because they definitely, you know, did the right thing and continued to maintain it, upgrade it, you know, add on to it. It, it was beautiful. It was an absolutely beautiful house. But, also- but they made a solid investment. Also to illustrate this, this is nothing new, this idea of gaining so much value by owning property. My right. my parents, the last house they bought, they bought in like the late 1960s in the Elton Hills area for like 25 grand, right? Yeah. And they lived there until the house sold in the, I think it was 2007, but by then that house had, what? Oh. Six times value? Yeah, at least. At least. Yeah. Yep. yep. Isn't that awesome? And I mean, now, that is even, awesome. And even since they sold it, the family they sold it to, they have probably doubled their money on that. Yeah. Oh, no, they've more yep. than doubled it since yep. they bought it. Yep. It's a good investment. And people think, oh, how can this house get any more expensive? How, how can this one actually gain any more value? Trust me, it will. It will. So... Well, you know what? Yep. This is, we're going to take a break again already. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. We we'll go. be back. Just a moment with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. It's News Talk 1340, KROC AM at 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. <laughs> Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. It's Andy Brownell with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Of course, we're talking about real estate. That's what we do on Saturday mornings. And I, That's I think what I pretty- do on every morning, <laughs> every morning, every afternoon, and every nighttime. <laughs> real estate, real estate, real estate. Well, I think we've pretty, pretty well firmly established that the idea of owning a home is a great way to increase your wealth, right? Okay, I'm going to tell you just how much, okay? I have another article here from the National Association of Realtors magazine. And the title of the article is, Study, Homeowner Wealth is 40 Times Higher Than Renters. 40 times? 40 times. Wow. Most owners have earned more than 100000 in equity over the last decade. Okay. Yeah. Over a hundred thousand. Easily. Easily. This this is this is these numbers are just so it's like, okay, maybe I should buy another house or two or three. Further evidence that home ownership is as important of an avenue to build household wealth. Middle income homeowners have seen their properties appreciate by sixty eight percent since two thousand twelve, accumulating a hundred and twenty two thousand one hundred dollars in wealth according to a new report from National Association of Realtors, which was just released at the uh, Realtor Broker Summit. That's amazing. Uh Uh-huh. Low-income homeowners who earn less than 80% of their area's median income saw 98,900 in equity gains in that same time period. Compared to zero. Right. Compared to paying rent and earning zero. Ninety-eight. 98,900 real dollars, okay? But, of course, 
let's face it, the rich keep getting richer, right? So the upper income households who earn more than 200% of their area's median income accrued 150,800 in equity. Clearly, this is all based on the, you know, the price point of the house, yeah. right? So it's the percentage is the same, but if the price point is less, then the dollar amount is less. But if so you people to do, are, but yeah. even so, they're paying more taxes, right, Andy? Yeah, no, but if you did the math and you wanted to compare it to income, the biggest gainer, I would bet you, I don't have time to do the percentage. Is the low right, income? Is the lower yeah, income? Yeah, the low yeah. income. Yeah, you're right. Ninety-eight thousand nine hundred um, in that middle income, one hundred twenty-two thousand in that upper income, one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's not a huge discrepancy, and like you say, that ninety-eight thousand nine hundred to that lower income earner is definitely a bigger chunk of money. Absolutely. So, so it says the analysis shows how homeownership is a catalyst for building wealth for people from all walks of life. So a monthly mortgage payment is often considered a forced savings account. Wow, where have you heard that before? <laughs> it helps homeowners build a net worth about 40 times higher than that of a renter. And that's coming to you straight from the chief economist, Lawrence Yun, even though you've heard it here from me for the past four years consistently. Consistently. Our house yeah. is the bank account that we live in. That's right. So get in one if you're not in one. I don't know if you heard that this week that the Rochester area builders are talking about work. They're working with the county HRA, and I hope they do this. I really hope they find a way to do it is to launch some sort of initiative that they're going to build a smaller footprint house without an attached garage and hopefully sell it for about three fifty, dollars brand new house. Yeah, yeah. That would well, be awesome. I I can tell you that I've been working with a developer for about four years now who's coming into the area to do some really cool stuff to provide some um, affordable housing. Unfortunately, just my rules with real estate, I can't go into details until things are inked and available to the public. So, Darn it. Um, but there there are good things coming. I mean, it, it has to happen. Yeah. I mean, there has to be more options because everybody deserves to have that home ownership. Everybody deserves to have that ability to build that equity and build that wealth. And it's good for all of us. And you know that the demand exists. So at some point, the market will find a way to meet the demand. Yes. Exactly. It takes exactly some innovative right. thinking to get there, but it will eventually. Yep, but it'll, it will happen. It will happen. So I think this article kind of is, a. Um, hopefully by this point in the show, this is like, well, duh. This one is titled, Think Twice Before Waiting for Lower Home Prices to Come. <laughs> because, well, duh, they're not coming. So this one says that... Um, there are still 53% of millennials who are renting because they're waiting uh, for those home prices to come down. So yes, they have already told us in another study that they wish to become homeowners someday. And if they're really truly waiting for the home prices to come down, it probably isn't going to happen anytime too soon or ever. It's just like saving money. You got to get in there and get started. Just get started. You know, I, well, I don't want to start saving until I can put at least $100 a month. Well, how about if you start when you can put 20 Because guess what? You're still getting money ahead. Yeah. So don't put it off. Start now. Start building that home equity. Get in that house. Those prices are going to continue to go up. Mark my word. And you'll start building that equity sooner than you will if you wait. Now, remember, 40 times more wealth amongst the homeowners than the renters. You heard the actual numbers, too. The actual numbers. Yes, for sure. So if you need to buy a house, I've got some available. Do you want to hear about some of my listings? Yeah, let's do it. All right. At 1806 16 and a half Street Northwest in Rochester, we've got a three-bedroom, two-bath house with a one-car garage. It was built in 1958, and it is currently listed at 249900 First day on the market. So get there out go. there quick. You know All that right? one's going to go fast. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it is. All right. If you're looking for something a little fancier, I think I mentioned this one last week as it was just coming on the market. 
It is a beautiful house at 2474 Fieldstone Road Southwest. Mm, yep, nice area. It, it was built in 17, so it's, you know, it's one of those houses that we say better than new. And when I say better than new, it means still feels and looks brand new, has all the things that are in style today, but those blinds have put in to the tune of 10 grand. The landscaping has been done to the tune of, in this case, a lot. This house has a beautiful outdoor kitchen and in-ground pool. I mean, it's a very, very nice house. So it's something that you could never build today for anywhere near this price. It's 940,000, six bedrooms, four baths, three car wow. garage. Yeah. And I'm just going to tell you, their taxes are higher than the average median in New York. <laughs> but it's uh, 3,953 square feet. Um, just an absolutely beautiful house, but less than a million dollars. So uh, if you're looking to get into a beautiful house at a great price, there's that one. And I still have the one on Galena Place as well. And that one is 949 for six bedrooms, four baths, built in 2018, and a little over 4,000 square feet. So we've got a couple of nice options in that high end. And here comes another one for 249.9. So we got them in the low end or the affordable. All right. The end and all the way up. So. This one is the townhome at 2827 Riverwood Lane. And it's a three bed, two bath, two car garage, 249.9. Perfect. So if you are interested in these homes, if you're one of these millennials who really, really wants to get into buying a home, but are for whatever reason not getting into it until you heard this program today, how do you get a hold of Robin? Please call me on my cell phone. That number is 507-259-4926. If I don't answer it, it just means I'm talking to somebody else. Leave me a message and I'll call you back. All right, Robin. Thank you, and hopefully next week when we talk to you, the weather's a lot better. I agree. All right, okay. have a great week. You too. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9.